I found an interesting uh, checklist if you want to know if someone's in a cult. And if they are in a cult, then let's have a look at these. Thinking in black and white terms, well, I've known a few people who've been in religious orders of various kinds, religious groups, and a few cults. And sure enough, black and white. You're in it or you're out of it. You're good or you're bad. And so on and so forth. That kind of thinking, it's obvious cult thinking. Using new language, cultic jargon. Well, I've known a few groups like that too. Oh, you've got to be self-honest. You've got to be uh, peace and oneness, love and light, and so on and so forth. Saying goodbye to all your old friends and only seeing people affiliated with or not critical of the cult. Well, that's true as well. Like uh, people who are in Scientology or the Jehovah's Witnesses. If there's someone who is critical of the group or not willing to listen to your psycho babble, you cut them off. If there's a chance you can convert them, well, you stick with them. Otherwise, you sever the old connections. Creating distance from family, especially during holidays and family events, well, certainly. You cut off friends, you cut off anyone who might doubt or question or lead you away from the cult, making your new family the members of the cult. And this idea of euphoric, yet simultaneously tired and worn, I've known people who've uh, been in cults and they've only had four hours sleep. That's the most they're allowed. The rest of the time, rest of the day is practicing meditation or devoted prayer. It leaves them like that. They're very happy people, but they're also, well, <laughs> worn out, tired, depleted, humorless. When you're talking about their belief, or indeed about anything, they lose their sense of humour. You make a joke about something not being serious, and their sense of humour is gone, depleted. Much for the same reason why they're euphoric. Tired and worn out, the humour goes as well. You know, thought manipulation, it steamrolls the mind. A change in diet and sleep patterns, well I just mentioned sleep patterns. Many cults say you should only have four hours sleep, or maybe two. Some say more than that, you know, six. Some say you have to wake up at five in the morning to see the dawn. That kind of thing. Diet as well. Uh, many groups, which are cults, believe in, for example, not eating pork, not eating fish perhaps, shellfish, uh, eating only red fruit one day of the week, perhaps. Something weird like that. Low on money, well, guess where it's going? Towards the group. They're buying into courses, they're buying into uh, meditation classes, or they're giving money towards a, a supposed charity. There have been some religious cults which uh, send Bibles to the Middle East, or Bibles to Africa, or Bible stories for children in Africa. And, you know, people think it's a charity, but it's really propaganda for the third world so they can set up churches over there or temples. So it's pretty bad. Uh, poor grades, that's with, of course, uh, students and children. Um, students can be recruited towards cults within um, college, or as we would call it in the UK, university. And... That's a fairly common thing as well. They'll begin to get poor grades because they're focusing on the, quote, greater truth or the big picture. So it's a very dangerous uh, characteristic altogether. A dismissal of their prior life to involvement with the groups, uh, with the group is all bad. So uh, basically dis uh, anything not involved in the group, anything prior to the group and their involvement in the group before their life changed for the good. It must have been all bad. And if there was any good, well, it was a false kind of good. You felt happy? Oh, that was deception. You felt good? Well, you didn't know God fully then. 
and it's that kind of mentality. A change in goals, priorities and life plan. I've seen people firsthand who've been living a very progressive, normal life. They have some stress, a bump along the road. Goals suddenly change as they enter a spiritual group or organisation. It becomes all about the group, or at least centred around the group. Priorities shift dramatically and the life plan, instead of getting that promotion and getting yourself a new car, maybe getting enough money together to put down a deposit on a new house, it becomes doing the God thing or doing the Enlightenment thing, being part of an organisation which values you only for as long as you're useful to them. Return to childlike behaviour, well, many cults in thought reform, uh, otherwise known as brainwashing, encourage childlike behaviour. Finding joy in simple things, simple practices, and of course people involved in cults can be quite childlike. Talk about their belief, get past the calm surface, and they're, <laughs> they're scared to death because you might shatter their illusions. And they can be aggressive, they can be childlike, they can have tantrums. Obvious signs that someone is having something very serious happening to them. If they're involved in a new religion, and they're doing many of the other characteristics, it might be a sign. Dogmatic adherence to new beliefs slash ideas with the inability or lack of interest to logically assess these new beliefs. How many people going through depression, mourning, they're having some kind of mental, emotional stress, are recruited by a cult, convinced of certain ideas, and then they do not question. They don't question how it works, why it works, they just have been convinced when they're at a low point in their life and they become part of the machine. They don't question, they don't need to think logically. It can be, oh, of course, young earth creationism. Why is it true? Oh, well, um, because the Bible says so. Because God did it. Or it can be, why are there reptilian interdimensional aliens, like David Icke says? Um, because um, I has proof. You know, it's really primitive stuff in the end, and it's not truly advanced thinking. It's limited thinking. And uh, critical thinking is, of course, repressed by the beliefs they tend to have, the process they've gone through, the uh, brainwashing of the group and being part of the group. And, of course, lastly, secrecy. So what do your leaders believe, then, and how does it all work? I can't talk about that. It can be that simple. What do you do in your uh, prayer classes? Sorry, I, I don't want to talk about that. They'll avoid the issue because maybe they have something to hide. So all of these characteristics, not necessarily all of them, you don't need to be a person who has all of these, but certainly many of these characteristics are indicative, that's to say they indicate that a person may be in a cult, or at very least a fairly serious and potentially cultic group.